watching this play over and over again. And what we can tell you is if it counts, this game will be tied at two. Maine right now has a two to one lead. There's still a minute seven remaining on the Mike Cornell major penalty against Maine. So Northeastern is still going to have a man advantage whether this is a goal or not. Phil, how many times have they looked at that <laughs> shot and that deflection over and over again? They're studying it down at the replay screen at the score. Should be a time limit on this type of thing. I we get this game in under, uh, under midnight. Well, the referees are smiling, and they have made a decision, and we'll, we'll learn about it sometime this month. <laughs> Very quickly, because they're heading back to the ice right now. They're going to wave that goal off. Well, no goal it is. And we will continue the Northeastern power play. Well, the well, key word there is conclusively. They couldn't conclusively say that that was not directly uh, redirected intentionally by Mike McLaughlin other than that. That's two goals Northeastern has scored in their last two games, which didn't count, although last week's came at when the, after the game ended. But it was pretty close. Northeastern almost won the game last week in overtime on Saturday against Providence when Anthony Batetto scored, but it was just after the green light went on and the game was over. All right, the Huskies continue their power play in the main zone. 38 seconds to go on it, and the Black Bears do build what is almost impossible to do these days, and that's to tie the puck up in the corner. And Mark Nemec and Spencer Abbott did a great job of preventing the Huskies from gaining control over there. Yeah, Robin, that rolled off another at least 9 or 10 seconds off that clock, leaving the Huskies with 37 to go on a, a major five-minute penalty. Pim. Quailer, Sapaneri, Carlson, and Batetto. It's a pretty good power play. Here's Quailer trying to cut in and a steal. And Parker back two on two with Diamond. Back to Parker trying to go around. That's Carlson, a forward, having to play defense, and he did a pretty fine job. Now Sapaneri looking to take it in close, and it's knocked away by Mangine. Batetto to Carlson. Trying to find some space. He found it. And he also found Dan Sullivan's catching glove. And he'll hang on with nine seconds remaining on the Northeastern power play. I mean, they're not bashful about going on the offense when they're a man down at all. And Northeastern took advantage with a transition uh, attempt. And Carlson had plenty of good skating room to get in position to fire that wrist shot. And he got all of it. If we didn't have to work, uh, that next weekend, we'd be heading to Cape Cod for the women's games. Absolutely. Good luck to Danny Ryland and Northeastern's women's hockey team in their Hockey East playoffs coming up. All right, the penalty's over. Maine not only killed the five-minute power play, but they scored a shorthanded goal. It's two to one, Black Bears. And here comes Justin Daniels. He's got Reed, two on one. Score! Justin Daniels looking for Reed all the way, and he pulled the puck back and went upstairs. And Northeastern did not score on the power play, but they score right after it's over. And credit Justin Daniels, his seventh goal of the year. He basically backed Sullivan all the way into the net as far as he could and just let it rip. That's a great judgment call by Justin Daniels. Who had to wait for the main defenseman who was supine in front of him to finish his attempt at a block. And there's a happy Jim Madigan as uh, things worked out for Northeastern. They've tied the game. Bill, it looked a little like Justin Daniels might have waited too long, but uh, you, you called it right there. You saw Sullivan backing up so much that it actually gave Justin Daniels a little area to shoot. Yeah, he had to wait until the, the main defenseman was out of his way, and then he, he saw how deep Sullivan was in net and let it go. 